All right, Doug and Carl here, the T-Jet Club. Um, we're going to talk about armatures today, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of demo just to show you how to check your armatures and to, uh, I guess, categorize them, would you say? Yeah, we had a club member ask a simple question, you know, how do you check arms? And I, and I thought, you know, that's actually a great question. If it's not something you've done before and you're not an electrician, it's not complicated, and once you learn how, it's actually fun. Uh, if you race certain ohm armatures are not allowed in certain classes so this is something you need to know in a, in a way to determine if an armature is even worth putting energy and time into because it could be bad it's a fun process and it doesn't require an expensive equipment or piece of tool or anything like that yeah. so. so at some point maybe later on we'll get a, an example of just about every armature that's made and we'll ohm it and we'll kind of categorize it but today yeah. we'll at least show you how to um, check them to make sure they're good we, we we looked for a bad one. We couldn't even find one. You we two. went through a whole bucket of armatures and we couldn't find a bad yeah, one. Yeah, so so let's uh, take a look and, and uh, show you how to do the magic. You bet. All right, here we go. We're going to start. Uh, I wanted to show you that you don't need an expensive meter. It's just a simple uh, meter. This is an $8 meter that I've literally had for 10 years and it has worked fantastic. Uh, important part, though, is make sure it has uh, good pointed probes for uh, for testing and and that's really it so let's get started we're just going to lay this meter down okay and then uh, i find that the 200 setting works the best if you go bigger uh, you don't get the the fine increment that you're going to need so we're going to go ahead and turn this machine on and this is the ohm setting that's your ohm signal or uh, sign right there so we're in the 200 setting and you can test an armature in the plate, out of the plate, and then we're gonna do something fun that a lot of people don't know. We're gonna test one in the car. And so we'll start with this one right here. We've got a, a T-Jet plate, and it's got uh, what appears to be the, the gold wire gray tip, real common T-Jet. And we're gonna take our tips, and it doesn't matter whether it's positive or black. I like going out to the soldered piece right here because you get a good connection on there. And we're just going to get a good point on it. And our meter is reading 24.5 across those two. And then just rotate it and do it again. We have 24.3 and then do it one third time. Hey, we did find one. Nice. We have 48.3. So, I don't know how that happened. We went through the whole bucket looking for a bad one. So, we ended up with 24.6 this time. I think that was 0.5 before. And then a 24.3. That's the same as before. But when we get to this third and final pole, we have a 48.3. Now, that armature is bad. That's an excessive uh, difference between the poles and that's a huge number you really shouldn't run anything above 24 probably uh, so this armature is actually a bad armature and that's what you test for so let's test a good armature same thing and you'll notice I'm not even cleaning them. this like this so we can actually see the can numbers. you see that then okay so, so once again I'm gonna put this on there put that on there and we have an 8.0 nice reading 7.9, 7.9, So that's a pretty accurate armature. Uh, that's actually kind of a rare, <laughs> a rare armature. Uh, but let's do this. Let's say you just have an armature and you want to test it. This is what I do. I use an empty chassis. I call it a mule. Never mind the fact that someone glued the springs in. Okay, this. <laughs> <laughs> we're just going to put that armature right in there and that gives us a good place to hold it now i hope people are watching this video are going i know what that armature is because that's a pretty rare armature can you see that so we have a 4.6 that's that's hot and then we have a 4.7 let's get one rotation and a 4.8 and so that is that's a good armature that's really good and close and just to give you an idea of what that armature is that is the ultra super rare super 2 armature and just real quick when you hear people talk about laminations this is a four lamb there's four stacks of metal on the edge right there and that's what makes it the quadra lamb all these aurora armatures right there 
you can see the stacks. They're just twos. Two lambs. So the quad lamb was kind of a big deal for stacking. You can see they're thinner, but there's more of them. Uh, and that's what people talk about. When people talk about the poles, this is what they're talking about right here, the pole. And that's where the wire from that lamb comes over and ties off and solders, and that's the pole. So we tested them out. Now let's do something a lot of people don't do. Can you test one in the car? Well, the answer to that is right here. Now try to test on the brush. Try to bypass the, uh, the brush spring. And you're going to get a little bit of bouncing, but it looks like a 12.2. And then uh, if we rotate this, hopefully we'll get a different... You don't really know. <laughs> it's kind of like roulette. 12.1. I wonder what armature this is. Hmm. I suspect that it's going to be a little higher than testing the armature straight because you're going through the brush. And there's a 16. That That's more what I would have thought. So... I, I don't know how accurate testing through the chassis is. 16.2. So I'm, I'm going to think that this is probably a 16 armature. It's, a, it's an old Johnny Lightning chassis, so that's probably pretty accurate. So you can do that, too. And it's a fun thing to do. Oh, and there's one other thing I wanted to show you guys. If you're racing and you like fray and it's important to you, when you test an armature, you can come out with one of these fine markers right here, and you can write the value right on the end there and that'll stay on there and so next time you're in that car you know that you've tested that and it's it's a 17 you know point whatever or 16 so you don't have to continually retest them and you notice that i didn't even bother to clean the arms because i always come out here to the pole and clean it out and, and test it out here in the solder because i don't want to make marks in my com plate with the uh, test leads and i think that you know if you got any questions on that or if there's something that you do uh that uh, might help other people send it to us and we'll do an update i'll add it to it because this is all about helping other people uh, have more fun with slot cars build f uh, fast cars and build reliable cars and not waste time on parts uh that can't be salvaged like a bad armature where did that go which one was that that was this one <laughs> so, the bad armature that we took an hour to not find and then found accidentally <laughs> And usually if there's one pole that's bad, it's kind of double of what the other ones are. Yeah, and this one was that. Yeah. So, yeah, this one was that. And that's what you look for. And to be totally honest, if you test an armature and you have 16.1, 16.2, and you have 18-something, then that armature is probably not worth using and putting energy into. They, they should be within uh, one point of each other.